Hello everybody, this is TT95 here and welcome to What Remains of Edith Finch. I'm not sure if I believed all of that, but I'm sure Edie would have. So all of her family members are gone. Except for her. This will be obvious later, but my mom never told me any of these stories. Edie would have, but mom didn't like bringing up the past. Though, when we adopted a stray kitten, she was the one who named it Molly. I spent a lot of time in Great Grandma Edie's room. Rob, the, the, the purple. When Edie told people Sven was killed by a dragon, she could also have said he was building a dragon-shaped slide that collapsed. She could have, but she didn't. Louis died a week before we left, but Edie had already started to memorialize him. Her room was like a museum. Even in her 90s, sometimes Edie seemed a lot younger than my mother. The only trace Grandpa Sam's first wife Kay left on the house was the pink bathroom. Yeah. It was a pretty big trace. You think? There's a secret in this bathroom. <laughs> There's a secret in this bathroom. It's in the last place you would look. It isn't in the cupboard. It's hidden in this book. Sven gave Sam an old camera he'd refurbished. He never put it down. Edie gave a big interview about a mole man living under the Finch house. My mom was furious. For 500 years, the Finches have been famous throughout Norway for their fortune and misfortune. Odin Finch buries the latest victims of the family curse his wife, Ingeborg, and their newborn son, Johan. On January 7th, 
1937, he set sail with his family and his house, hoping to leave the curse behind. But 40-foot waves off the coast of Washington send the house and Odin to the bottom of the sea. Odin's daughter Edie, with husband Sven and baby Molly, step ashore on their new home, Orcas Island. Odin Finch is the first to be buried in the new family cemetery. His daughter Edie is already dreaming of a new Finch house. Whatever's wrong with this family, it goes back a long ways. Sam, Fort Calvin. I knew Grandpa Sam had a twin, and that he never talked about him. I guess my grandpa didn't like history any more than my mom did. How I Want to Remember My Brother, by Sam Finch. The thing I remember is that when he made up his mind, that was it. My brother said he'd die before he ate another mushroom, and he did. At Barbara's funeral, we swore he'd never be afraid again, and he wasn't. I think Calvin always wanted to fly. Sam! Calvin! Dinner's ready! Coming! But that day, he finally made up his mind to do it. I told him going around was impossible. Oh, this is gonna make me sick. Maybe if I hadn't said that. Oh my god. Maybe if the wind hadn't picked up, then maybe he'd still be here. But I doubt it. I think he'd already made up his mind. That's what I want to remember about my brother. You know what? A game never made me motion sick before, but holy cow. The day he made up his mind to fly, and he did. Calvin's story felt strangely familiar. When I was younger, I remember trying to do the exact same thing. After the funeral, Edie roped off Calvin's half of the room. Mom said Grandpa Sam enlisted at 18 and never set foot in the room again.
The passages were a pretty tight fit. They'd obviously been built for smaller hands and bellies. Growing up, I always thought of Barbara as a child star. I never thought about how hard it must have been for her afterwards. Of all the stories people wrote about Barbara's death, I'm surprised Edie saved this one. Old Jack here with another ghastly tale inspired by America's most unfortunate family. I'm calling it the surprise ending of Barbara Finch. <laughs> As a child star, Barbara was famous for her scream. Now at 16, she was all washed up. A has-been. But in a lucky break, she'd been asked to perform her signature scream at a local convention for monster movie fans. It was just the boost her career needed. Unfortunately, her scream hadn't aged well. <laughs> Getting better. I think you just need the right motivation. Her biggest fan and current boyfriend, Rick, was about to demonstrate when... <laughs> now that was a great scream. It was Barbara's father, Sven. He'd slipped into a table saw and had to be rushed to the emergency room. So Barbara got stuck babysitting her youngest brother, Walter. Her convention comeback was canceled. Okay, I'm hearing frustration, but I'm not hearing terror. What if I tried... A gang of hoodlums in Halloween masks have been terrorizing Orca's Island tonight. Police are urging residents to... You're right! Also, I loved your delivery on that. Why is your basement door locked? Because my dad likes making puzzles and secret passages. There's a key hidden in the music box. The secret is to keep winding and winding until finally the key pops out. Thanks, babe. I'll be back in a sec. 20 minutes later, Rick hadn't returned. So Barbara went to look for him, right on cue. She reached for the music box. And as she wound the key, she listened for Rick, but the house was silent. Scratch and imagine the worst. Oh, my God. Here. Oh. Rick? 
Barb, relax. I was just trying to scare you to help you find your scream. Well, I'm not scared, Rick. I'm furious. Then act furious. All I'm getting from you now is that you're hurt and confused and you're... She threw him out, but she kept a little something to remember him by. Barb, have you seen my other crutch? And she was still holding it when she fell asleep watching the late, late picture show. Hours later... Barbara! Walter, what's going on up there? Okay, I'm coming up, but if this is a trick, you're dead, Walter. Island police describe the man as six feet tall with a steel hook for a hand. Residents are urged to lock all doors and windows and notify the police of any suspicious activity. I returned, saw the hook man, and was speechless. He was quite smashing. <laughs> her part beautifully. She thought about abandoning Walter, but just couldn't do it. Dying to speak to young Barbara. At the door, she heard whispering. It was coming from inside the house. Oh dear. what kind of monsters they were, and she realized what was about to happen. She was going to be famous. And with her final breath, Barbara Finch gave the performance of her life. I wasn't there myself, but I hear Barbara was magnificent. Poor girl. She had a taste for stardom. But unfortunately, so did her fans. Of course, the police blamed it all on poor Rick, who disappeared the same night. A 
kind little Walter, hiding under his bed the whole time. He took it all pretty hard, but that's another story. As for Barbara, tucked inside the music box is all they ever found of her. Her ear. Now that's what I call a real eerie tale. <laughs> Edie told me all Barbara wanted was to be remembered, as absurd as that comic was. Maybe what Edie saw was a happy ending. Hmm. Alright, that's gonna be it for this episode, guys. I really hope you enjoyed it. If you did, remember to like, subscribe, hit that bell icon, comment down below, and in general, and this is TT95, signing off. Bye, guys!